Welcome back. In the next five minutes we will talk how Elon Musk got exposed, BlackRock CEO sees very little demand for Bitcoin, Bank of Jamaica issues new reminder of caution, TikTok bars crypto ads and doubts about the suicide death of John McAfee. So stay tuned till the end. It's going to be very exciting. As per the Reddit user UX Crypto Burrix, why did Tesla buy $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin? Couple of factors, one short term and one long term. Short term play, Tesla's production was halted due to supply chain effects from the pandemic. This is why there has been a lot of delivery delays this year. This meant that Tesla's shrinking profits from selling carbon credits to other car makers alone wasn't enough to post a profitable quarter. So Tesla decided to buy Bitcoin and then sell some of it, 10%, before the end of Q1 2021 to make up for the shortfall. It wasn't at tech liquidity, as Musk claimed. Long-term play, the reason for Tesla's revenue from carbon credit sales shrinking is that European car makers are shifting focus to EV themselves, meaning they no longer need to purchase credits from Tesla to comply with strict emissions regulations in the EU. So Tesla now needs to make up for this potentially permanent revenue loss. What do they do? One day before Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla would no longer accept Bitcoin payments due to rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, Tesla applied for renewable credits certificate from the EPA. Unlike carbon credits, which can only be sold to other car makers, the EPA's renewable credits can be sold in the open market to any industry. Elon figured he could create a new renewable credits market out of Bitcoin mining to replace Tesla's revenue loss from selling carbon credits. Too bad for Elon, Bitcoin mining uses 4x higher than the average share of renewables in the US, 56%. The dumbest part of all this has to be the use of, and transactions, because no incremental energy is used for transactions. This guy frankly has zero understanding of how Bitcoin works. We are going to link the original thread in the description below, so you can also read it after finishing this video. Putting Bitcoin in a similar class as retail-driven meme stocks, CEO Fink told CNBC that there is low interest for crypto among long-term investors such as retirement funds, pension funds, and IRIS. BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager, holding almost $10 trillion in assets under management, for a recent announcement. Fink said that while he was excited about investors taking an interest in speculative assets, crypto is totally unrelated to BlackRock's mission. He added that during his recent business interactions, none of the long-term investors he interacted with had inquired about cryptocurrency. BlackRock began trading Bitcoin futures on the CME in April. Later, the company said it was studying cryptocurrencies to see if the asset class could provide a benefit despite the volatility concerns. While it seems likely that BlackRock will continue to dabble in the crypto space, its institutional clients appear to have shown little demand for the asset class. Like most regulators around the world, the Bank of Jamaica BOJ, has maintained a cautious approach when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Such a worry is a given, especially in light of the broader concerns surrounding cryptocurrencies around the world. Several regulators have been taking a cautionary position on digital assets, with many having curtailed the use of it for transactions. Here, it's worth noting that while volatility and illicit use of assets are among the top concerns of the BOJ, it is not shying away from developing its own central bank digital currency and plans to introduce it by next year. The Jamaican program uses Ireland-based e-currency Mint Inc. as the technology provider and does not rely upon a blockchain. The Chinese short-form video sharing app TikTok has recently updated its advertising policies, banning certain types of promotions. The now verboten themes encompass plenty of financial services and products, including loans, day trading and forex trading platforms, and of course, crypto-related ads. During the entire late 2020 and early 2021, which can be considered as the Dogecoin frenzy, influencers used TikTok and other social platforms to share videos and encourage more people to invest in Dogecoin. It goes without saying that Dogecoin has a specially strong community, who used all their power to promote their meme coin. However, there are valid concerns regarding Dogecoin promoting ads that target unskilled and amateur young folks. In general, these types of ads do not clearly disclose all the risks involved. 
In crypto, disclosing and showcasing the risks involved is crucial, as the UK previously banned several ads for not informing the risks involved explicitly. John McAfee's wife, Janice, has raised doubts about her husband's suicide death in prison. In fact, from the first moment, doubts were raised about the way in which his death occurred, so the perplexities of his wife are not the classic outburst of those who lose a loved one by suicide and remain incredulous in front of the drama. In particular, Janice claims that the handwriting of the note McAfee left before committing suicide is suspicious, so much so that she doubts its authenticity. She also posted a photograph of a suicide note found in her husband's pocket, in which in fact there are no signs of folding. Moreover, according to Janice, this note does not sound at all like someone who has lost all hope and is thinking of taking his own life, but more like one of John's classic tweets. It is really difficult to understand how he could have decided to commit suicide on the very day he learned that he had finally obtained the extradition he had been asking for so long. Indeed, this circumstance feeds the doubt that his extradition might actually have been unwelcome by someone.